Hello everybody, it's me. Good to see you all again. We're going to talk about the Feast of Tabernacles today, which happens to fall in the fall. It happens to be celebrated in the fall. And I am not a person that likes the cold, but I really appreciate the change of, you know, the seasons. I get, I just really enjoy them. And in fact, right now I have a bunch of windows I can look out and I can see all the leaves changing and I just really appreciate it. And you know, not everybody everywhere gets to see it, but I do. And it just um, is a wonderful way to be like, this is God's handiwork. So I encourage you to get out and enjoy the fall, whether you are just going to sit and look at the leaves or go for a walk or go to the apple orchard, but make sure you have a ha ah, moment and enjoy God's handiwork of autumn. Welcome again. I'm very grateful that you're here with me today. And actually, just a little funny story for you. I recorded this just a moment ago, and I got halfway through, and the camera um, tripod slid down. <laughs> it tipped. And you can only see my face from here. And I tried leaning back. It was hilarious. And being that tabernacles is considered the feast of joy well it definitely sent joy off flying in this room with me and the holy ghost so let's jump right in heavenly father thank you that your joy is our strength and i ask that you would speak clearly to all those that are tuning in to hear today and that you would just give us we have we you've given us ears to hear but give us ears to hear and eyes to see and a heart that understands. Thank you for imparting to us Holy Spirit in Jesus name. Amen. So tabernacles. All the feasts that God has placed in the Bible all have principles that are still still enduring forever. We on as a New Testament believer may not be mandated to keep the feast, but we have never been released from keeping and honoring the principles of the feast. Now, every principle of every feast is wrapped up pointing to Jesus, every one of them, and pointing to what he has done for us. Hallelujah. Some of them have been prophetically fulfilled. Some of them have not been completely prophetically fulfilled. Many believe that in this fall feast season, honing in on tabernacles could very well be the season that Jesus returns. Well, that's exciting. And we don't know. I guess we'll find out if that's the season that he's returning. But as a believer in Jesus, Yeshua, it is our responsibility, having Jesus living in us, to allow his precious Holy Spirit to minister through us all things. And so today we're camping, we're camping at the foot of his presence and saying, explain to us what we need to know about the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, one thing I want to say is the word feast in our language, we kind of think of like this big Thanksgiving spread with all this food. The word feast, Hebrew word that we use for, or we have feast, it originally meant an appointed time an anointed appointed time. And so these feasts, Rosh Hashanah, Atonement, Tabernacles, just the ones we're gonna talk about today, but all of them are appointed times that God has set to be with his body in special and unique ways. And so, like I said, we're not released from the principle of that, we absolutely are not. And if God has seen fit to put it on his calendar, I have a moed with my people at this time. Don't you think it would be wise for us to put it on our calendar? I've got my phone right here. I've got my calendar in here that I would put it on my calendar that there's an appointment with God. Now that doesn't you know, neglect in any way your personal daily bread your devotion time. But if God has said on my calendar, I have these dates set and it's in these dates that there are certain things that I want you to do. 
and and um, things I want you to to focus on and things I want to release wouldn't it be wise to actually show up and meet God at those appointments so that's what we're going to talk about today um, I'm going to just quickly review Rosh Hashanah and atonement and then we're going to focus on tabernacles for the rest of the time so um Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year, in God's um, calendar, it's already in the next year, and he's already rolled out the red carpet of the plan for this next year for us. Hallelujah. And so Rosh Hashanah is a celebration of, hey, basically, Happy New Year, but also um, self-reflection. It's known for self-reflection, introspection, and repentance. Um, this is not a salvation if issue. If we know Jesus, we're saved. Hallelujah. It was through the atoning blood that we're saved, right? So this is not a salvation issue. This is an honoring God issue. It's a heart issue. In my, in, in my in introspection and my self-reflection, am I submitting to the Lord? Where's my love walk? You know, all these things. This is a great time where we want to clean the slate. Anything that could be between us and the Lord is at this time that we want to do that. Hallelujah. And then we have the Day of Atonement, which I like to call at one meant. You know, I'm going to back up here for a moment with Rosh Hashanah because this just it bubbled up in my heart. We always should be looking to see, making sure that our hearts are right with God. But if God has put on his calendar a time where he really just wants his people to just be focused on making sure and doing our part, isn't that a good thing? Isn't that a good thing to be like, okay, this is the season going into my next year that I want to make sure that I am God, that I don't have anything between God and me because God doesn't put anything between him and us, okay? So I think that's very valuable and important. So we go to atonement, which according to um, the calendar, the Hebrew calendar is the most holy day of the year. And God said is the most holy day of the year. So let me tell you, when you were born again and Jesus became your ultimate atonement, that was the most holy day of the year to you, if you know what I'm saying. This is not about salvation that you have to come before God on the day of atonement in order to be atoned for. As a believer in Jesus, we have had the ultimate atonement. This day of at one we've made sure at Rosh Hashanah that we've cleared out any laundry, and we are reflecting on right now at that day of atonement, oh, what Jesus has done for me. We, we make much of the blood. We focus on what he did because his death and the shedding of his blood and, of course, his resurrection made it so that we could be at one with him. Not just cover our sin for a year and only be able to have a messenger stand there on our behalf, but to be at one with him forever and to be able to enter into his presence and have his living presence living in us. So atonement, we are grateful, grateful to be saved, grateful for the blood. And then we jump into tabernacles, which I love how Paula White has coined it, party time. Party time. This is an exciting time. And I already said at the beginning, it's called the, the season of joy or the feast of joy. Woo! Hallelujah. There's nothing between us and God. We've cleared out those cobwebs in the closet. We've had that introspection. We've made things right that weren't right, whether with us or with others, with God. We've done that. We have put ourselves back in a place where we are honoring and we have gratitude for what God has done for us. And now it is party time. It's time to praise him. It's time to thank him. Now, um, I want to read a couple of things to you. Tabernacle is the only Levitical priest or feast <laughs> which God outright commands us to rejoice. And he does that in Leviticus 23 and verse 40, which I have right here. He's talking to them and he says, um, I'm just going to read the end of the verse. You shall rejoice for seven days. Wow. And then says that this shall be 
um, a statute forever. Remember, we're not released from the principle of the statute. We might be released of the law, but not the principle. What happens inside like the human be body when we actually get happy and rejoice? Well, we could go on and on about the health benefits. But God has said, this is the time that you rejoice. And so what he really ministered to my heart in this season of tabernacles that we're in, which ends on October 20th, um, is watch your mouth. Are you complaining or praising? Are you being negative or positive? What's coming out of your mouth? Curses or blessings? Now, this principle of tabernacles, we're not released from. We should definitely embrace it. But you know what? It goes far beyond October 20th, doesn't it? Whew. Powerful stuff. According to the word and according to um, historical information as well as current day information, if you talk about the feast, just say the feast in a Jewish circle, they know that's tabernacles. It is known as the appointment. Wow. And the appointment of joy. God says, come into my presence with thanksgiving and joy. So we access his joy when we align our will with his, which is what Rosh Hashanah and atonement is all about, is getting our will lined up with the joy. Okay, I'm looking down at my notes for a second. When we are aligned with his will, there's fullness of joy, and it sets us up for the breakthrough. The things that God has already released into your life for this year. Doesn't he say, call things that be not as though they were? He's already released it for you. Okay, now, Tabernacles is unique because um, the Gentile nations were invited to join in. Isn't that cool? They were in invited to come to Jerusalem along with the Jewish people and worship the Lord at this Moed. Hallelujah. And the Lord told Moses in Deuteronomy 3 and 12 um, to gather all the men, women, and children along with the foreigners in the land so that they could learn to worship the Lord together. And it's the season of joy. It's the festival of joy. So you can imagine the worship. Learn to worship the Lord. It's not, oh, right? It's, this is praise you, God. This is excited, ecstatic worship. Amen. Tabernacles, guys, is about thanksgiving and harvest, which is why it's planted right where it is. Glory to God. So this is a season of harvest where we are harvesting that which we have sown in spirit and in physical. Um, and sometimes we're harvesting those things and we just don't see it yet, but we receive it by faith because God has said, I'm doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? And we take that by faith. Hallelujah. And we give praise. So this is an exciting time where we're not supposed to be cast down. And if you don't have something, you might have a lot of things going on that maybe just don't honestly seem to be that good. But if you look hard enough, you can find something. For sure, you're saved. For sure, you're breathing. You can find something to thank God for. And understanding that when you do, you're lining yourself up with the will of God for the breakthrough that you need, that I need. This feast is about celebration. It's not about a somberness. It's about... Now, I have six kids. Some are grown and gone. Some are still home. And they like to have birthday celebrations. Okay, do I need to say any more? It's time to celebrate. We understand that. Now, the other thing is when the harvest would come in for the Jewish people, this set them up for the year ahead. Because if the harvest was small, it would mean the, the year ahead would be challenging. Now, we know that we have access to the presence of God 24 seven, and we know that God is able to bring to pass whatever we need. We know that he has already uh, purchased our redemption. We know every promise um, that he has given is, is yes and what? Amen. Right. So we can say, oh, 
look at this harvest. Look at this harvest that we have. Look at what he's promised for us. Look at what he said he would do, whether it's healing, um, deliverance, whether it is a refreshing, whether it is restoration, whether it is a fulfillment of a dream. He has promised. We already have that harvest here, okay? And it is to carry us throughout the year. So the Jewish people would um, celebrate because of the harvest and it would carry them into their next year. So tabernacle celebration isn't solely on, oh God, you've been so good, but it's, oh God, what you have done for the next year. It gets us focused forward, which is huge. And that focused in the mundane of today, it like, it catapults you into your future. Oh, I feel the presence of God on that. He's catapulting you. He's catapulting us. Praise God. All right. This represents the day, tabernacles also, prophetically forward, represents the day we will never be separated again from him. Now, we know we have him in our hearts. And if you don't have him in your heart, you need to ask him in your heart. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my best friend. And then he will direct your steps. Hallelujah. But once he's in our heart, he lives in us. Yes, he's with us. Everywhere we go, he's directing us. He's waiting for us to come and get away with him and talk to him and read his word. But there's a day, hallelujah, when we will be with him. And not just him with us, but us with him. And what a party time that's going to be. And I'm not just talking about the by and by when your body dies. I mean that day when he returns. And we are together, as Amazing Grace says, that, you know, for 10,000 years and thousands of thousands of years, we will be saying, praise God, praise God. This is party time. Can you imagine the revelation that God will unload on us day after day in glory forever and ever? What an amazing time this will be. So tabernacles is also a prophetic statement of the day that we will never be separated again. You will never be separated from him or your loved ones. And we will have our new bodies and there will be a new earth. I mean, this is a glorious time. And of course, um, the rapture is also a prophetic look forward. And whether you are pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, no-trib, um, tribulation, meaning when will that catching away come? This is also a celebration of that. So there is much prophetic forward significance on the day of, of on the celebration of tabernacles. We, right now today, can celebrate his goodness in our life. We can celebrate that there's a day coming where we won't be separated. We can celebrate all that he's done. We can celebrate we're here today. And we can celebrate the provision that he's given us for tomorrow and for the rest of our lives. God responds to praise. He doesn't respond and he doesn't respect um, positions and peoples, but he respects and he moves with faith and praise. And praise, of course, is because of faith. And faith brings forth praise. And so as we're praising him, our faith is growing and God responds to praise. So praise him. That's why it says in all things rejoice. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noontime. Praise him when the sun goes down. We don't praise him for the bad things that happen. We praise him through them because he gets us through on victory side. And if we believe that he has purposed and plans for our life and that he's already laid them out, then we know that he will get us through. Amen. We're almost done. Hallelujah. Um, I want to read this to you exactly as I copied it. In temple times, the Israelites rejoiced at Sukkot with thanksgiving for the past year, but also in faith, gratitude for the next year. We can do the same today. Jesus also kept the Feast of Tabernacles as well. In John 7, it reads, On the great day of the feast, Jesus stood 
in the temple and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now, as I get ready to wind down on this, the Jews are commanded to go out, right? And to make their little tabernacles, their little sukkots, their little huts. And God brings his tabernacle out so people can see it. And also, as they sit in the tabernacle or that little sukkot, they can look up, which I think is significant because God tells us to keep looking up. But that little, that little hut, that little, I call it little tabernacle, was not meant to be hidden. It was meant to be presented to the earth and to show and point people to Christ and the provision in Christ and the blessings in Christ. All right. So Jesus on this festival day, he is the living example of the tabernacle or the temple, right? And so he comes out and he says, hey, look to me if you're thirsty, if you're hungry. Just a mirrored image, really, of that little hut, only now in flesh. And now the New Testament says that you and I are the temple or the tabernacle of God. And we are not to keep what he has given us inside, and we're not to look all humdrum about it. We are to bring it out that our life might be a testimony and point other people to look up as well. Isn't that cool? So um, if Jesus kept that feast and utilized it as a way to promote the gospel and to promote the purposes of God, which is the gospel, why would we not honor it? Come on. I hear you out there. Sukkot, or tabernacles, is God's appointed time on his calendar. Remember the calendar? On his calendar to release a special joy. Now, he can release it, and you can be like, I'm not rejoicing, right? In our home, we call this the frolic. When a person is being frumpy and grumpy and they won't stop, I say frolic. And you cannot be miserable and sad, miserable and happy at the same time. So frolic means you kind of... <laughs> so if somebody in our household is being all, mm, like, it's time to frolic. Because once you give in to it, you're, you're rejoicing. You have joy. So really God is saying... It's time to frolic, folks. And as you frolic, I am going to release a special joy into you that's going to take care of your spirit, soul, and body, and your life. Hallelujah. So that's cool. We need to receive it. So we can't be like, hmm. if you need to, frolic. All right. This joy will strengthen you for the year ahead, for the day ahead, for the season ahead. And it serves also as that mwah, prophetic foretaste of things to come. Yeshua's Jesus' return. Mm, what a day. We rejoice in this time. We rejoice for the greater joy that is set before us. Oh, I just want to dance. Hallelujah. And it's the time we cut loose and we do that. It's time to get back outside the box of our life, like that, again, that little, that little hut, and look up. It's time to step out and look up. It's time to look up. But it's definitely time to look up and get out of the mundane. God wants you out of the mundane. Come on. It's time to break that cycle. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise Him for His provision. Praise Him for His future promise. And praise Him for His presence. And of course, the Word says not to come before Him at a feast empty-handed, which is talking about an offering. And we should give a financial offering because you know what? The Gospel is free. But it takes finances to circulate it. Hallelujah. But it shouldn't just be, well, here's my dollar. 
here's my $10, here's my $100. If we give that and have not that, all we've talked about, that joy in our heart, it's better that we just keep that money then, isn't it? But out of a heart of gratitude and blessing and praise, we sow that seed as a thanksgiving offering and a praise offering to him, and we don't come before him empty-handed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I hope you were blessed by this and that you are enjoying Tabernacles. And if you watch this and you're like, oh, shoot, Tabernacles is over. I missed it. No, God will honor you right, right where you're at. Amen? Then maybe um, you can get that on your calendar next year, but you can have your own little Tabernacles right now. And really, like I said, this principle doesn't end on the 20th. This, these principles set forth in the fall feasts of introspection, um, at one mint, and um, praise and joy should be a constant in our life. All right, praise the Lord. Jesus loves you. I love you. And Jesus is Lord. God bless you.